This is the Create Your Own Life Show, where we talk about things that matter. We're free thinkers and we don't believe in participation trophies. We're not afraid and unapologetically ourselves. It's time to create your own life. Thursday. It is the 18th of August, 2022, and welcome to your Create Your Own Life show. Hope you had a great Tuesday. Hope you had a, a great Wednesday, and uh, hope you enjoyed the episode on Tuesdays. We had Mike Fallett, who's a really good friend of mine, really good guy. Hope you enjoyed learning from Mike, and I'm uh, glad my Yankees are playing just a little bit better. Man, the uh, beginning of the week and the month of July was making me a little nervous. Um, for those, for, for you out there listening that may be Yankee fans or may not be Yankee fans, it's a bad month. 13 and 17, I think they finished a month at. Anyway, I have a conversation that I'm going to be sharing with you today that I really enjoyed. Um, Julia Barbaro is an author. She's a life coach. And Earlier on, I had someone ask me about homeschooling and really why why you would do it, what it looks like, and I had Britton LaTulip on the show a couple months back, which is a very well-listened-to episode, but I wanted to get some more information from somebody that's been doing it for a very, um, very long time in perspective of she's... I think on her last child being homeschooled now, and she's homeschooled several children. So there was a lot of great learning points because kids learn in different ways. They um, access information in different ways. So we talk about homeschooling, talk about parenting. We also talk about a very cool book series that she's put together with some very interesting titles. I think you guys are going to find out in this conversation. So... I'm excited to hang out with Julia. I had a really great time. I'm also excited to share it with you because I think there's a, a lot of things that you could take away from this, whether you want to homeschool your, ch- your children or don't, but you want to have kind of the idea of what you should have your finger on the pulse of as a parent. It's it's something that really mattered to me, so I was excited to, to learn a little bit more. Before this before we get into this episode, though, I want to do shout out a couple great companies that made this episode possible. To our friends at My Pillow, who right now we're offering to those of you out there listening up to 66% off of select products. If you use my promo code, which is CYOL over at mypillow.com, 66% off of select products. Also, shout out to our friends over at Audible, who right now we're offering you a free audiobook download and a free month of their service. I am reading Washington by Ken Chertow. If you want to grab that book or any other book for free, courtesy of Audible. And a reminder to you out there, if you have not yet subscribed to the show, do me a favor, head over to YouTube, head over to Apple Podcasts, head over to Spotify, wherever you spend your time, subscribe to the show, and it helps me to reach more people, make a bigger impact, and you may find there's there's episodes you were missing that have a really big impact for you too. So I hope you uh, get something out of it there as well. All right, without further ado. Let's get into this conversation with Julia Barbaro. Hey, what is up, everybody? Jeremy here. And guys, I'm very excited for the conversation we're going to have today because it's been something I've been talking about quite a bit more on the podcast. And, you know, that's family, how we educate our kids. Um, And our guest today is Julia Barbaro. And, you know, she's somebody that does it all. She's not only a homeschooling mom, but she oversees her own life and marriage, uh, as well as her coaching business, which is a seven-figure business she co-founded with her husband. And she's also writing a bunch of children's books. So I'm excited to dive into that today. Julia, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. This is super exciting. So happy to talk with you. So I want to find out first and foremost, because, you know, you have a a, a very unique viewpoint on things. Um, I guess for you... And, and, I, and I'm trying to figure out how to ask this. It seems like putting family first was like a really important thing for you. I guess why? 
That's a great question. I, I have to say, coming from a family, Irish Catholic family, everyone was divorced. Oh, same here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you know what it's like. A lot of divorce in the family. Marriage was important, but for mm-hmm. some reason it just didn't work out. And there was something about it that bothered me as a, as a young girl. And I always desired to have a strong, healthy marriage. But I didn't have, an, I didn't have you know, that example, mm. that strong example. When I met my husband, it was just something. I'm like, that's the guy. That's the guy that's going to help me, you know, get 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 my dream. Basically, of you know, he was also a family man. He and, and be had, entertained at the same time. I may add. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> because whoever knows Gino Barbaro knows how you know lively he is. And my life has been very entertaining, Jeremy. Thank you <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I have to say, I met him. He owned a restaurant with his family, and the whole family dynamic was just beautiful for me, and mm. I just desired that. Once we got married, you know, I thought, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to stay home, raise my family, to have my husband sp- support that financially, but also support me in wanting to do that. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, no, you need to find a career, you need to work, you need to it's be out It's tough in, the in this yes. day and age, because I think at the same time, like, I don't know, society also kind of looks at it weird. Like, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and, like, that was, like, seen as admirable. And I think, yes. like, now, for some reason, it's just, it's not seen that way. Like, everybody should be working, but if we don't want to, we don't have to. Like, you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Like, well, the crazy thing, Jeremy, is it's almost looked down upon. It's almost like, oh, you didn't go to college, so you didn't, you know, you, you didn't, there's no career for you, so you decided yeah. to stay home. And I'm out there just telling people, embrace it, enjoy it, you know, because what we're doing is we're raising these little tiny people and in the moment you think well what's the point of this they just they don't even say thank you <laughs> you know what i mean it's like what am i doing oh they do if i say they do what eventually. do you say now yes. what do you say but do they mean it you know <laughs> what i mean <laughs> do they truly mean it but we're raising these little people to be out in the world mm-hmm. and they're going to make a difference and i don't think we realize it because we can't see the future we can't see them older we just see them small and we see our you know if we get a shower in as a say at home mom it's a really really good day and that's you know so we're living in that moment sometimes we don't see what what could be later on it's it's really interesting though because i think that's a, that's a viewpoint i don't think we quite get right like as mm-hmm. as as a mom we're help you're helping to create you know kind of what the next generation looks like And I'm not really trying to make this political, but uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, once said, you know, freedom is never more than one generation away. Right. Like, you know, it's it's kind of if if we don't you know raise our kids the right way, we're not going to kind of like where we go. Mm -hmm. And that may be part of, you know, why we're seeing a lot of stuff we're seeing. But family is vital. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, you know, that's what I've seen. And through my experience, because we have six children, you know, we've been married since 1998. So you guys can all do that math. But we have six children aged from eight to 23. And yes, it was a huge challenge. It was lonely at times. It was like, what am I doing? Should I go find a job? It was, there were so many questions and so many stories that I, could, that I could share with you of me just questioning what I was doing. But I was responsible. I said, this is the, this is the life I wanted. This is what I chose. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to follow through. So, so let me ask you this then, because, you know, not only are you a mom of six and a stay at home mom, but you're also homeschooling, which that in itself is a difficult thing to do. And it's something that that we're starting to get into. So I'm just kind of, you know, learning about this. And we've had a lot of guests in the show talking about this because it's something I just want to learn a lot about because I'm getting into Mm it. So I guess for you, number one, why did you want to do that? And number two, how did you get comfortable with that? Because I know initially like that has to be hard. Yeah. You know, I have to say, so my sister started it before I did. And I kind of gave her a hard time because I'm like, only weird people. This is a long time ago. I said, well, just the weird people do that. Are you sure you want to so, do that? So here's the thing yeah. I'll say about that. When I was younger, we said <laughs> right. only the weird kids are homeschooled. Yes. Now, the homeschool kids 20 years later very are different. the normal ones. It exactly. was good to be weird then. Yes. We didn't tell many people. I mean, we were very quiet about it. I'll just tell you that. Yeah. We came from a, from a town that was really into their school. And mm-hmm. so if you didn't send your kid to that school, there was something not right. But we did. We, we thought about it. I, I, I kind of checked it out quietly. I looked into it. I, I met some people that did it. I'm like, these people actually are pretty cool. You know, their kids are really balanced. They have really good dynamics in the family. I said, let me try this out. And when I approached my husband, he's like, hold on a second. Are you sure? <laughs> so it was, it was, it, there was a conversation there. And that's, and that's really important in the marriage to remember is the communication is, is vital in a marriage. If you want a strong marriage and yeah. we went through really difficult times. This was something we talked about on, on mm-hmm. your podcast with that's Gino. Right. Like you have to be willing to, like the ground rule has to be like, you have to be willing to say what you're willing to say without like hurting the other person right I think that's That's really important you know yes definitely but two it is to know why you're doing something yep and I have to tell you in the beginning we didn't know why we didn't have our reason why we went to homeschool we liked what we saw 
but we were so afraid of the outcome because we didn't know what it was. You can't see the outcome. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you, Jeremy. It took until my daughter, who is now 23, graduated high school, applied for college, and got in for me to say, wow, we did a good job. Mm. That was a long time. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I you got to really year. see if the investment works then by that yes. point. So it's hard to understand, is it working for you? Is it not? It became more of a lifestyle for us. It mm. became more of just not homeschool. We just did school and then we had family. It just all went together. It just became our life. So so how does that work then, I guess, logistically? Because, you know, number one, six kids, that's a lot to be teaching because, you know, like, but at the same time, like you look at it and like, so I was a high school teacher and they put me in a room with 40 kids, which I was not yes. prepared to do. So right. maybe six kids is easier. I don't know. <laughs> so when you're, when you're looking at, at that, like, like, how do you approach it? Like, you know, do you get involved with different groups? Like, like, what do you even do to get started in that arena? Mm -hmm. Definitely look in your community. It's different now. And I'm sure you know that with online, but there's something about being in a room with other people, especially with other mothers that align with your values with the children like because because it's really who we were surrounding ourselves with that sure. whether we were going to be successful in certain things and homeschooling is one of them so if we're around if we're around families other homeschool families that are encouraging us and helping us out you know we're going to succeed more than if there's a lot of complainers in that group and you know they're kind of down and you know what i mean so it's important to find a group that you're comfortable with and mm -hmm. they do align with your values and the kids get along because that's mm -hmm. another thing is that we think well that's what's been interesting sweet and lovely with and our it's not the case yeah yeah like we live in a, we live in a lake and like our mm -hmm. our i guess most of the kids here are homeschooled i don't know why because the school districts <laughs> are pretty decent around here okay. um, but most of the kids are homeschooled in the lake and they're all about mm -hmm. her age and, and coming into her age which has been interesting so she's already playing with those kids i guess before yes. she's kind of starting with that process and getting into that group mm. It's so it's so important, but it's this is another thing, and I and I want to be clear: the kids are important, but so are we as the moms, because if we're going to find other women that understand the value of marriage, mm -hmm. and maybe even come into the conversation, saying good things about their husband, saying good things about marriage in general, about family life, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Because a lot of us want to be responsible, we want to do the right thing, but it's when we have voices coming in like outside our home they do sometimes it ruins it ruins what's what's what we're trying to make at home it's really weird well that's why i'm so careful frankly about like even like the tv my kids watch you know what i mean because yes. like it it can you know number one they don't watch much of it but like when yeah. they're watching and I'm, I'm very careful like there's like yes. you know three tv shows i, I let my, my three-year-old watch you know right. one of them um, is the original Power Rangers, just because there's part of me that likes that, um, from like the 1990s. Um, she watches this little British show about this little dog family called Bluey. So she doesn't watch a lot of like TV I wouldn't feel bad about. But like like you're saying, mm -hmm. they need to get the right viewpoint about like what is it to have a family and why is it important? Yes. And, and you know, you mentioned TV and that's one thing that I have to tell you that I'm, I look back now and I'm thankful is that the kids weren't influenced by the school district because we have no idea what they're teaching the kids we don't know what the mm -hmm. kid next to them is teaching them what they're showing yep. them and i didn't really that wasn't a reason why we homeschooled but looking back i'm thankful that we did because of that mm -hmm. um, because we do have it's like we have the computers they're all in the living room the tv's in the living room we do have access we're not on top of the kids we don't yeah. you know we're not like that but we teach them why things are not appropriate, why things are better for us to listen to or not listen to. And I think that's really that, that conversation as a mom, to, to especially we have five girls. Yeah. So it's really, it's a big deal. You know, why, instead of saying, no, you can't watch this, well, what's the reason? Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, age appropriate, and we have to change the wording and all that. It's, it's a challenge, but well, it's, it's a it's, challenge, and I mess up all the time. <laughs> we just canceled Disney Plus in my house recently. We did too. <laughs> and And it, it's funny, though, because my three-year-old, this is the way, like, like so we, we still have, like, the direct TV stream where they can watch it. Mm -hmm. And, like, the stuff on the Disney Channel, if I'm watching, isn't that bad. But the sure. direct, Disney Plus is kind of, like, a little sure. rough. Yeah. So, but she tells people... Daddy canceled Disney because Disney misbehaved. When they apologize, he'll buy it again. <laughs> I love it. See, I love it because you told her a good answer for it. Exactly. I didn't just make it up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but it's interesting because that's a really good point because, like, I've had um, Tina Deskovich on the show from, from mm -hmm. Moms for Liberty. And one of the biggest things that they've been doing is, like, looking at, like, what's going on in schools because I think for some mm -hmm. reason they forget, like, hey, we're actually – paying for this you know what I mean like you know what I mean like there are kids I do I do and I, I think a lot of people forget that is we are their ultimate guide mm -hmm. you know if we're gonna send them to school that's fine I know a lot of people that do 
but we really need to be responsible and take care of, okay, what'd you learn today? Tell mm-hmm. me about it. And let the kids be open to telling you because a lot of times the kids are afraid to tell you things because you're going to get mad at them. Yep. And so it's that moment of, okay, my reaction to what they're about to tell me is really, really crucial mm-hmm. because are they going to come back next time and talk to me? And my wife is really good at that, by the way. She's incredible oh, at that. Beautiful. She's like, you know, you know, Adelaide, what happened, honey? You can tell me. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to be mad. We need to talk right. about it because you don't want to hide those things from mommy. Like, sure. it's really like she's she's incredible. She's a great mom. Yeah. But I think that it, that it's really important. And I guess like logistically, like looking at it, Julia, like how do you set up your day? Like, how do you manage kids on different levels, right? Because they're all taking different subjects. Like, how does that work? Yeah, that I have to say has been the biggest challenge. And finally, our youngest is in third grade, and I feel so free. <laughs> like, it's just hard to explain, <laughs> you know, going, because you have to, like, my daughter, older, our oldest daughter was 15. She was in 10th grade. I was pregnant with our last, and I'm going to be honest, I slept the whole year. I don't even remember it. I was just exhausted. <laughs> I was wiped out. I don't even remember. And I said, Gabrielle, I am so sorry. She's like, Mom, you know, I learned life skills. I learned mm-hmm. how to help with you, help th- with the kids, take care of the kids, cook, the whole thing. She could yeah. run my house. She's like, I would never have learned that if you weren't in that situation. And so I, I think we have to be a little bit less hard on ourselves because mm-hmm. we want the kids to learn every single thing in a book. But it's their, like I said before, we're guiding them to be out in the world. What kind of people they are is we're actually, that's up to us. We're, we're, we're guiding them with that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we forget how important that part is. But it's a challenge. It's a trial and error. Absolutely. So are, are your kids, like, when they're doing schoolwork, um, like, are they on it all day? Are they taking breaks? Do you work for a couple hours a day? Like, how do you structure that yeah. part? We, we've, like I said earlier, we've tried everything. We've tried s- scheduling, charting. I mean, <laughs> like, like, and what's worked for different children? And, and that's something we have to remember is each kid is unique. So, you know, for instance, our Sophia, who is going to be a senior this year, mm-hmm. she's very orderly and structured. And so I help her make a schedule. And her schedule is we do it together so she feels like it's part of it she's mm-hmm. part of it and she follows it you know and so our next youngest is veronica who will be in ninth grade this year who does not like school and is she is my she is my biggest challenge because mm. she's not like reading unless it's super interesting and exciting and so that alone is such a challenge for me but it's good for me because i'm learning patience <laughs> <laughs> it's where it, we learn our patience. But I think it's interesting too because like here's 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 the the issue, right? Like, you know, I as I as I mentioned, I I taught high school and I think the issue mm-hmm. is is like with that many kids, they all have to be forced to learn the same way. And I think the thing that's interesting right. you're talking about here is how individualized people are. Like mm-hmm. for me, I'm 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 weird, Julia. I'm really weird. Like I could have been where I'm at without even go, going to any school at all. I was yes, always right. my I was a somebody that I was my parents had me reading Tom Clancy books at like nine mm-hmm. years old. Like I was always somebody that was actively interested in learning. Not every right. kid is, you know what I mean? Sure. But for me, like I was driven in that. But you have to understand where kids are coming from. Are they more auditory? Are they more yeah. visual? Right. Are they more into reading? Do they need more of you? Like it sounds like exactly. with your one daughter, you act kind of like a guidance counselor. Yeah. And I have to sit there, otherwise she won't do it. And I, mm. and I think that, again, is when it comes down to me as a person, we forget that, you know, the homeschool mom is is, <laughs> is a person. Yeah, <laughs> and I have absolutely. have emotions and feelings and trying to figure things out. And, and you have bad days nervous. and good days absolutely. aside from learning. 100%. But we, when we get nervous, when we get, oh, my gosh, my kid's not, you know, up to grade or learning what they're supposed to, we sometimes get angry. Mm-hmm. And so we take that out on the kids. And yep. they're confused because why is mom yelling at me? when you know something happened and i'm just so nervous that they're not going to succeed in life you know it's it's, it's our fear right as, mm-hmm. a, as a parent but it is trial and error and i constantly have to tell myself you know what i'm doing the best i can i'm doing the best i can today because that's all i could give you know i i could hire a tutor which we've tried before and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes it works with certain kids sometimes it doesn't and i think that's what it is is you have to try something if mm-hmm. it doesn't work for your one child, try something different. And when you do find something that works, hold on to it. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the kids are, are getting older now. So, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're starting to find a little bit more time in your day. And, and one yes. of the things that, that you've <laughs> wanted to do is start helping other people with their kids. And you've actually started writing some children's books. So I want to know, number one, you know, why did you decide that? And then number two, like the titles. I love these titles. <laughs> the Cannolis Exploded. 
a gelato blast like so so why and 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 how did you come up with the ideas for these oh gosh well my husband and i do a lot of work with his company with his uh, community they are italian people, food so i guess that makes it's, sense it's italian I, of course <laughs> we have to go italian i mean come on that's all we, we my husband had a restaurant that's all we do that's all i do in life is cook clean up cook again you know and so why not why not food um but we want to share the message of responsibility on how important responsibility is mm -hmm. because a lot of us well we blame everything you know well yes. my childhood was this way my mom was this way this is why i'm like this and once we decide because it's a choice to be responsible to, to be responsible of our thoughts of the words we use of the action that we that that's when we stop blaming everything else and everyone else in our mm -hmm. life and it's so freeing it's amazing because now we can just make a decision and that's why we we, we wrote these books it's for children but it's really for the parent can you hold <laughs> that, that up a little sense. higher for people seeing the sure. video oh that's cool this Look is at that. the cannolis exploded and i love it because it has this one had the first one has three has three characters in it and then the second one has some more characters same characters but just add added a few oh cool but it's basically something bad happens and these three characters have to decide what to do and they all choose something different <laughs> according to their name we yeah. have responsible rhino pity party pig and creative caterpillar oh uh, my pig is offended awesome. by the way he does okay. not do pity parties <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i you know and so the kids relate but so do the parents because mm -hmm. i've gotten a lot of people call me and say listen this book really helped me and I said, that's what it's for. It's for all of us. It's not just for the, you know, the seven to 10 year olds out there. It's for the parents to live a life of responsibility. And then we went into the second book, the Gelato Blast. We added a couple more characters, um, Encouraging Elephant, because like I said earlier, we can encourage other people. We have such an impact on other people. You know, we, we, sometimes we go to the grocery store, we, don't, we can choose to say something to the person behind the counter talking to us maybe they're having a bad day or you just you know we can decide to be that encourager mm -hmm. but then we have to ask ourselves who's encouraging us like who are we talking to who's our mentor we have mentor moose in the second book which is hysterical you know because a lot of times we listen to somebody and maybe that's not the right person maybe we really need to think about that so who are we listening to i'm just waiting for 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 gino's first book multi-family fox and the growing dollar oh i love it <laughs> <laughs> pass that along. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think that's so important though because I think like number one we grabbed your books for my kids which is really exciting but number two like I think it has to be communicated early on um, right. to children how important that is because I know there's a yes. bunch of different book series like that um, um, I know there's a there's a book series Glenn Beck promotes that we, we've gotten for mm -hmm. the kids and stuff too mm -hmm. because they have to be communicated to in that way right because right. like especially like under the ages of five because yes. these are things they're gonna have the rest of their life right and it has to be fun Jeremy when the kids laugh about something and they're laughing about the characters you know that's when they're learning something and when mm -hmm. you could actually mention the characters throughout the day puts a smile on their face you know things change because yes. a lot of times as parents we're a little too serious and we take it too seriously, if you know what I mean. So well, that's important too, because I know, yeah. like, even in my marriage, like, I'm mm -hmm. the much more serious one, and my wife mm -hmm. is the much more insouciant mm -hmm. one. And mm -hmm. I feel like, like, that balance is actually even important, like, not just in you know your kids, but also in a marriage too. Hundred percent. I always tell people the the best advice because they're like, what's you know, what's your advice? You know, you've been married so long. Have a sense of humor, mm -hmm. because if you don't, it's going to be really challenging. This is a lot of things you can laugh off instead of getting insulted and getting mad at. So a sense of humor is so important. And the same with, the, with the, just in family in general, because we, we are so worried that we're going to mess our children up that sometimes we're in a bad mood just because of that. We don't even realize it. And so when I said earlier about responsibility of our thoughts, start paying attention to your thoughts that you're having because we could change them. We could change them. If it's always negative, mm -hmm. we can change them to something less negative. Start, you don't have to start gigantic. Start small. I'm curious how you how you apply that like like how does that work for you because I'm sure like you know you're working with kids all day some days you feel good some days you know right. like you know some days there's money things you got to worry about like life happens right. right and I guess for you like how do you handle that personally so you don't show up that way for the kids yeah that's a great question I I think like I said earlier it's that trial and error and, and it's just it's that life experience from the beginning when I look back till now and it's the moment when I try to figure out, well, what is this life coaching thing? My husband and I became life coaches because mm. it was so fascinating. And you can help, and I really made fun of it early on. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever, but 
I looked into it and that was the, the moment where I'm like, well, this is, this is pretty amazing. And mm. so when I got certified for life coaching, that's when things for me changed and my husband as well. But for me personally, I started paying attention to just what, when I woke up, my first thought, if it was negative, my whole day would be negative. Yes. And, and it was pretty wild, you know, and we could do that and we could encourage our children to do that, but in a, in a fun, loving way. So, you know, you mentioned um, in the book, the big thing is like teaching kids responsibility. And one of the things I think is really important, I know my parents did this with me and it's something I've done with my kids as well, is like, you know, even at a young age, like the things they're responsible for. And I'm, I'm um, like, I look at, um, we have a couple dozen chickens. So every mm -hmm. morning my three-year-old knows she goes out to me with the barn with her basket and she picks up the eggs. That's what she does. And mm -hmm. then she puts them in the fridge because that's what she's capable of doing. Um, and I, I guess when you look at it, like, how have you applied that with, with your kids and making sure they stay responsible? Because number one is getting the ideas, as you mentioned in the book, sure. but, like, but what does that look like in action? That's a great question. And again, just what we were saying before, each kid is so different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have one son, he's second in line. And I have to tell you, when I say, okay, guys, it's time to clean up, three of the girls will just get to it. And he sometimes will just stand there, have no idea what to do because there's no guidance. Okay, so a lot of people, we forget this, kids too, they don't understand what that means to mm. clean up. Mm -hmm. So some of some of some of the children need an actual first you're going to do this, then you're going to do this. You have to actually guide them. And I know that sounds like well, he, he should know, but we have to guide them how to do some things. And mm -hmm. some children just naturally know because they, they watch you, they follow you. But some kids aren't as aware. And it doesn't mean anything because my, my son is like super brilliant, you know, mathematical in, in all the finance and all that. But I think the seriousness is also important in that as well. Because like, you know, as you yes. mentioned, like we've worked on that with my kids, but my wife also yes. plays, oh, you know, she'll she'll turn on the cleanup song by Dora and the Explorer because yes. my three-year-old sings and cleans up. Yes, yes. And I think that's what you, what the, the point is, it's like how we're guiding them. But at the same time, you know, as my kids are older, I have to figure out what are they capable of. That's why mm -hmm. I loved that you know what your child is capable of and gives them that task. And so once in a while we can see how far we can get. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that's the fun of being a parent. It's like, how much can you do today? You know, I know what my kids are capable of and I could, you know, like they, they literally can run the house if I go away. <laughs> but you know, you know what's interesting too is like, is like, I think a lot of parents tend to like quash their kids willingness if this makes sense mm -hmm. like yeah. like my one and a half year old um yeah sure she can't mop the floor she can't do all this stuff but she has little kids toys and she makes a mess while i'm trying to clean up you know trying yes. to also help clean up but like in her mm -hmm. mind she's helping exactly. so i think like we say oh good job emmy you're really helping mommy and daddy really appreciate it whereas other parents are like stop you're getting in the way like you have you can't quash their willingness either that's a boundary thing. And, and I think a lot of times we think about our own boundaries. And a lot of times as, as the parents, we step into our children's boundary. And I say that because, same with me. If the that, kids I've never the heard dishes, anybody say that before. That's a great point. It's amazing. If the kids are doing the dishes, I don't like how they're doing them. The average mother, the average parent would be like, here, you go do something else. I'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was just, I gave them a chore. I gave them something to do. They're going to do it the best way they can. I have two options. I can just say, let them do it, let them figure it out, or say, you know what? You're doing a really great job. Look, if you do this part, if you, let me just, if you, if you want my help, I can help you. You can ask them. Mm -hmm. You could show them something new, or you can let them do it their own way. Because our way is not only the better way. It's just, it's just our way. It's how we learned it. And so when we step into the kids' boundaries, a lot of times, you know, they feel like, well, they don't know how to do anything. And so they're not going to help anymore. And, you, so. and, and then you wonder why at, you know, 18 years old, they don't want to do anything with you. They don't exactly. want to be involved with you. Like you can't, like yeah. if you quash a kid's willingness, you're taking sure. so much away from them. Absolutely. And, you know, give them a, say that was great. I'm re I loved how you did that. I never saw it that way. I never saw someone do it like that. That's amazing. Thanks for showing me a new way because you're encouraging them to do it more. Mm hmm Julia, I have loved this conversation, um, and I've, I've been looking forward to it. So I'm glad we finally got to do this. For people listening, um, if they want to find out more about you, if they want to get the books, where's going to be the best place for our listeners to do that? So Julia and Gino.com. My husband and I there have uh, both their books there. Both the books are on there, and there's even a cute little video that we made. Um, we have coloring pages that you can print out, have the kids color, which my older kids adore doing that. Uh, you can also check us out on Jake and Gino's site. We have a podcast called The Julia and Gino Show where we talk about family, family life, marriage. We talk about business, raising a family in the business, everything you can imagine. We talk about that. 
Well, Julia Barbro, thank you so much for your time today. This was awesome, and I, and I was really looking forward to it. Yeah, Jeremy, thank you so much.